This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 370 for the week of Monday, May 27th, 2015. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. And my name is Steve. On today's show, we have, from CNN, Jose Argumento. Hey, Jose. Hey, everyone. How's it going? It's going good. We're, we're all live in Dallas, by the way. We should point that out. Yeah, I think that's probably important. Uh, also live with us is uh, Jammer. Hey, how are you doing, Jammer? I'm doing great, and CNN is a fantastic channel. I enjoy watching it. Thank you, Jose, for bringing that to us. Thank you for the paycheck. Of course. <laughs> we also have a very special guest from Funimation. We have Josh Kosharak. Hey, Josh. Hey, guys. I get to see all your faces. <laughs> Say hi to Wolf Blitzer for me. I will. He's in Washington, D.C., though. All right. <laughs> so as Jose mentioned, we are doing this live and in person, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, and we have, and we're here uh, for OPP Dallas. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about what we've been doing this weekend, and mostly what you've been doing this weekend, Jose? Uh, yeah, we've been we've been filming uh, at Funimation, of course, with uh, voice actors and other behind the scenes stuff that we think you guys are going to find interesting, uh, whether you like the Japanese or the English version. Uh, Especially if you collect them on DVD, and we've shot some behind-the-scenes stuff of not only that, but our, our production process on this uh, video series. So you guys will be seeing that uh, hopefully soon. And just to be clear, this is not like OPP Japan. This is not a movie. It's a mini series. So look back. Likely on our YouTube channel. Likely on our YouTube channel. So uh, be sure to look back and uh, find some new stuff. You'll you'll see some new content over the next couple of weeks. And oh. Jose, tell tell everyone how heavy the camera is. Uh, oh, there's an emergency <laughs> alert for flood that we all got. Well, yeah, it's flood. Flood. <laughs> it, is, it is flooding in Dallas. It's, but no, we yeah. would be amiss if if we didn't give Jose a, a chance to complain about how heavy the camera is. I'm not going to complain about the camera <laughs> is. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, yeah, it's heavy. But you know what? It looks fucking cool. It is really cool. It's a great. You camera. look like like someone from the Matrix. Uh. Sure. The third one. What ah. does that mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the those, one no one came back to see. Like those Final Fantasy VI machines that they're in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. the Magitek armor. Why don't we go through kind of who we actually got to interview? Now that we've done it, we could kind of go through what we actually did for the process. I feel like I don't even know what I did yesterday. Um, we did a, a bunch behind the audio production and uh, the trailer department. We also got to talk with uh, Justin Cook, Joel McDonald, Sonny Strait, Brina Palencia, and Clarine Harp and Colleen Clinkenbeard. Those will all be coming out uh, within the next few months. I don't want to put an exact date on it yet. I think that's probably the safe thing to do. Uh, let's say midsummer for the first one. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, we guarantee you it'll be out sooner than the lag time between One Piece Podcast goes to Japan to yeah. record. And, we don't, and we don't need to wait on Oda for this one. Yeah. We literally did have to wait on Oda for the last one. Um, okay, so... Uh, also, note... Uh, we are going to have a ton of bloopers because, believe it or not, we all messed up quite a bit, and there's lots of... Now you're really that, selling it. That seems so hard to believe. We're so consummately professional. Professional podcast. That didn't sure. even grammatically make sense, and, and it was great. And I know you guys want to see all of the stuff that we messed up, so uh, in order to do so, we highly recommend you check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Podcast. We have a lot of new levels added to it. You and we're going to be adding a lot more over we'll the next few weeks. We'll be adding more, so if you want to check out some of the behind-the-scenes stuff that we're going to be throwing on to our, our Patreon page, be sure to do that. I know, thank you for those of you who have already subscribed. We're going to be adding a bunch of stuff real soon, so hang in there. We got you. So one uh, patreon.com slash One Piece Podcast. And Ed, you have something to say. Indeed. <laughs> do you? This coming, <laughs> thank you. This coming week, we're going to be continuing with our One Piece read-through project, which we took off this week to do this great little trip down here but we're doing the one piece read through for volumes 6 through 12 uh on thursday yes this thursday 7 through 12 7 through 12 right uh covering the baradier uh arlong and logtown and laboon mo most of laboon not all of laboon but actually i forgot how much of laboon was in volume 12 spoiler alert i'm way too far ahead and i have to slow the hell down that's true uh but, but everyone so, else is, is is in a good pace right now so basically you have until thursday and that's when we'll release it so check out that manga if you haven't started yet i could personally guarantee it's not as hard as you think to catch up on the first 12 volumes in fact it's quite enjoyable especially if you're already listening to this podcast yeah and i forget how much is cut from the anime just for like brutality and so on and so forth um, so, without further ado, we have a lot of stuff to do today. Um, 
we have the manga recap we have uh and that that's the main thing actually but we also want to talk a little bit about what we've been doing here not just for opp dallas which we've kind of gone through i mean what have your guys's experience been we should probably go over besides just talking about what we did how, how was it uh steve i feel like you're the dub guy we should start I'm with you the dub guy the dub guy um I, I don't understand your question. Like, how did you did you enjoy filming OPP Dallas? What was was there? I don't know. Yes. You didn't film OPP Dallas. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, tell us how heavy the camera. Was. <laughs> we went through that. I'm, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, no, no, no. But we, I was asking. <laughs> we went through the production right. process. Steve, go ahead. About the production process? Yeah. No, how was, how was it actually? How was, how was the this? day? What What do you think of the day? That's all I'm asking. I don't know why you're so confused. Guys, do we need it? All right, guys. It's like midnight, right? <laughs> so we just need to let everyone listening. One o'clock that. Eastern time. Yeah, <laughs> it's one o'clock Eastern time. Yeah. So Steve, Steve might be a little slow. He's no, a little punch drunk no, and just, loved. No, I thought like I was ready to answer the question, but Zach really felt like he had to really describe it for me. You looked so confused. Your face <laughs> was just like, what the hell are you talking about? It's normal. In short, did you think it was awesome? It was alright. Alright. <laughs> Josh, how was it filming something where you were? It was alright. <laughs> Ed, how was it uh, being at Funimation Studios? I stood on my feet a lot of the day. <laughs> <laughs> We are really so guys, but yeah, but you're gonna you're gonna love what is coming out of it. It's kind of weird because we it, we don't want to spoil too much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like we had a great time. We filmed a lot. We just I don't want to okay. spoil too much. Jammer, what was your least favorite part? <laughs> My least favorite part is is actually it's actually kind of embarrassing to be. Around. You guys are underselling the hell out of what we we did this entire weekend. <laughs> like just like oh yeah, it's fine, it's fine. No, it was great fun. Like I, we have to say, Funimation has been amazing to us. Like, they were so accommodating. Like, I kind of felt bad. Like, these people are being so nice to us right now. What do they want? Like, what do they want from us? Like, I don't get it. Well, you find out later. They're helping us out so much and just being like, oh, yeah, come on in, do this, do that. You know, unlocking doors. Like, oh, yeah, totally cool. And it's just... Funimation's great. Yeah, be sure to say that on your podcast every week. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No. uh, You guys can't see I have a knife to jam (laughs) or That explains no, it. No, it was a freaking blast. And uh, I always enjoy getting to hang out with all these guys in person. Believe it or not, we don't get to do it too often. So it's uh, a lot of sarcasm, a lot of ridiculousness. But you know, we were we were busy. We were at work, too. And uh, it's great to see so many familiar faces, meet some new people at Funny we've never talked to before. Yeah, a bunch. Uh, like I said, I don't want to get too spoilerific on this because... Uh, we didn't describe all the interviews we did or all the mm-hmm. stuff we did. There's a lot more than just that. <laughs> <laughs> Were we even there to begin but, with? Uh, it, it It's not about if you're a Dub fan or not. Just if you're a One Piece fan, you're going to love to see the production that goes into bringing the series. Right, or if you're interested at all in the process of you know filmmaking or anything of that sort, in general, it's, it's audio great. production, right? Yeah, specifically video audio, production. not so much video. Some, a little video, a little video, a little video uh, like some some of the stuff. If you're into really spoilers. technical stuff too, it's we have a lot of stuff for you. Maybe in more in the deleted scenes. Maybe more in the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, so it's we're gonna true. we're gonna keep it pretty general on the uh, on the actual video. But if you Patreon fans are really into that stuff, uh, yeah, you should pay for that, right? And get a lot of cool behind the scenes stuff. <laughs> uh, there's there's one more thing I want to mention unless you guys have anything else you want to mention about right. I, if I could put over those bloopers because um, when we mess up we uh, mess we, up big we, time we, we, no we commit we don't know when to stop <laughs> <laughs> see there there's a thing like we wait till Ed never... walks off when you then think... we stop <laughs> when you Ed think... you haven't walked out on the One Piece podcast in years <laughs> <laughs> that is true <laughs> the actual statement um, so yeah, before, before we get into the manga, there's, there's one other cool thing that I want to talk about. It's what we just watched. Oh my lord. <laughs> and I think everyone, it's time, and let's say it in unison, guys, it's yeah. Bargain you time! Now that means nothing to anyone else. Yeah. Steve, yeah, what did we just, know. actually Josh, what did we just watch? So, um, we had, uh, the... Well, you found, I guess you, the you luxury, these, like, artifacts. yes, <laughs> the distinct privilege. We were calling them poneglyphs, but yeah, they're like, uh, yeah. I so working at Funimation, I have access to a lot of like the older archived, uh, whether it be tapes from uh, old anime series we used to do. So um, thanks to Lance, uh, who you know 
he he used to be, kind of be the keeper of a lot of these old artifacts with within Funimation, and he handed off some old uh, one piece VHS tapes to me, and um, you know I scrounged up a VHS player and uh, <laughs> you know kind of told these guys like, hey, when you guys like Cowboy Dallas. Bebop, where you had to go down and <laughs> yeah, went to for and and for a <laughs> entire episode. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, once I got my hand on them, I, I knew who exactly I wanted to share them with, and it was these guys. And so I've actually been super pumped for uh, you know a few months now, just waiting for these guys to come to town because I've wanted to see them. Um, and so tonight, you know, we had the chance to kind of sit down and go through old One Piece VHS tapes, which you know they were everything from like old um, audition tapes, uh, like like one offs when Funimation was first trying to dub One Piece. Um, and also like like dubs that Toei had done with Canadian voice actors. Well, Steve, you figured it yeah, out. Yeah, and and our super sleuth here, Steve. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like he was kind Miracle of just like boys. yeah, he was just, like shouting out like voice actors and stuff. But these were like from like late '90s, early 2000s, yeah. and it was pretty awesome. It was like a blast from the past for us to kind of like, sit around and. You know, yelling at Jose to get the VHS tape to start working. And, this weekend uh, has been a lot of yelling at Jose. Yeah. <laughs> I was not allowed to go Why to isn't it working? Don't, exactly. drink. Don't screw this up for us, yeah. Jose. <laughs> uh, but no, it was it was really cool. And I mean, the the audio was everything that we thought it would be. Well, that's, yeah. maybe we should actually discuss the content of it. Okay, stop. It, Chamber. Okay, okay. Yeah, so yeah, the, the first it. video we saw, first of all, I, I was not allowed anywhere near the VCR with a drink, which is, uh, I, I think that you guys overreacted a slight okay. bit. No, <laughs> I, no we did not, did not overreact. Okay, for those I, listening at home. I walked two feet away, I was just walking with my beverage in hand, and I was like, alright, this is cool, life Let's is put it this way, but if then, he spilt anything, no human being would ever have seen these tapes. And let's also put it in context, the day before... Everything went wrong at every single part of the shoot. We improvised to make it work, but everything went wrong, and it I was did? taking no chances. None of you guys noticed because I'm that good, but everything went wrong. <laughs> anyway. Pretty good. I didn't notice that everything. So, I'm glad you got that out now. The first, the first uh, tape we saw, it was it wasn't a Funimation dub. It was probably from from up north in Canada or something. But no, like, well, Steve, hey, or maybe Alaska because they have a nice studio. Like <laughs> Even further north. Even further north. No, but like uh, the Arctic Circle. <laughs> In, in a reference to our barbecue time thing, like one of the more notable things was Luffy is is more of a surf. no. I'm sorry, no, no. 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 Oh, it is God. Luffy, sir. Luffy. <laughs> Luffy. First Get of all, right. he oh, was yeah. he was called Luffy in this in this version, and <laughs> he had a very notable time. As opposed, we all know Luffy loves meat. He he fucking loves meat so much, and that's his thing. That's his meat. that's his jam right there. But in this one, it wasn't Jammer, just meat. That's his jam. That's his jam. <laughs> it's like it wasn't just meat this you time. One step, you gotta do something with that meat. You have to barbecue it. <laughs> barbecue. Oh, barbecue it. Yeah. Pigs in a blanket. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 Pigs in a blanket. Hold on, I, I want to say this. This is my favorite thing of all. <laughs> so it's, first of all, it was a Vancouver dub, which blew my fucking mind. I There was a new version of. Well, hold on. Oh. First of all, I thought we were only going to be watching the Funimation test. I had no idea we were going to be seeing some Canadian stuff. So right there, I was like, whoa. Uh, and the Schmaltz, uh, <laughs> uh, it, they had their own version of We Are. Um, oh, they did! It, 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 it was kind of like a TV size version. It was very short. Uh, oh, thunder! By the way, those flash flood alerts came true, and it's now pouring and thundering. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, yeah, I'm taking off my socks. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, he was called Luffy. Uh, but no, he uh, yeah he he was all about the barbecue and the rubber arm go rubber arm go yeah, rubber it's arm attack go names. rubber arm yeah, go no gum gum with pistol. gum gum pistol. no gum yeah. gum no pistol sorry guys I kind of I, I I branched off I forgot my favorite part of all was this pigs in the blanket no <laughs> it was such a great episode choice it was an episode <laughs> oh, yeah. of the Opry song it yeah. was faded. It's entirely possible that Zach had never seen that episode before in his life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's true. I never had. <laughs> you never... For a great first exposure to that one. Yeah. I saw the beginning of it because the beginning is the stuff with Calm Belt. So yeah. I went yeah. back and watched that. I did not watch that in my first run, though. <clears throat> it's, um... It was a bad episode. But you never got to the part where the fat Marie needs the meat. I only saw that from Owned Piece. Yeah. That's the only time I've seen that. No, but the great thing about... Is this the whole thing is just like the... The way they, they adapted it, as we, we, you guys, we mentioned the whole pigs in a blanket thing, like, when they were coming aboard, instead of just fixing whatever... With meal, all their hopes and dreams? With, what? 
Isn't that how the song goes? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. But <laughs> that's, that's the Funimation version. Oh, yeah. We, that's the thing I wanted to talk about. There's a new version of We Are. Yeah. In the Vancouver dub. It's the only one with a new version of We Are. And, you know, it was definitely very... Uh, Saturday morning cartoon esque, but admittedly, if I was much a, better than the four kids rap, right? But if I was that. a kid, like at that day, like this brought a whole feeling of nostalgia. I don't know what it was. It may have been the VHS watching it, but there's something about it where I just I love. I think it was the VHS. It was so nostalgic. Nostalgic. Like I just felt like I was a kid again. Saturday morning watching this Saturday morning cartoon type thing, and it was just it was great. I loved it. Uh, on the other hand, Steve, I honestly felt like I was 26 uh, <laughs> here, in, here in Dallas, finally getting to see what I've heard about. Well, originally, uh, I think we should mention. I don't think it was ever really talked about that Funimation did a test dub until we, on our podcast. Until Bale and Sabbath mentioned it on our show. Yeah, the Java Cast, whatever episode number that is. Seventy. Seventy. And guess what we're on right now? Yeah. Three hundred and seventy. Yeah. Whoa. 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 So basically, Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, what it was is just. I, back in the day, before Four Kids even took a hold of this, the the, fran- the, the franchise, the license at all, uh, all these these dubbing companies were trying to grab One Piece as you know the next big hot anime to license and throw on TV. And um, you know, as mentioned before, we have dubs from Canada, and we we also saw a Funimation dub. Like they were basically sending test, I believe, probably sending yeah. test dubs to to Toei to. I guess bid for a chance to dub it for the mass audience. And well, somehow no, they I still thought... went with four kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I thought the the Vancouver one was actually commissioned by Toei because it has their like logo on yeah. it. It says they produced by Toei. They all do. They all do. Oh, okay, and it's more, yeah. It's it's kind of like that proof of concept. To yeah. Be like okay, so this is. So what we're trying to like pitch this to American licensors. Yeah. That's yeah. what it looked like to me. All three of them, I could say without a doubt. Even though they're all worse than the current Funimation dub by a significant margin, they're all better than the four kids dub by a significant margin. What it probably was somewhere in between there. Fun, like uh, I'm not going to talk about four kids. Never mind, we're done. I was gonna, I was about to, I was about to say like it had. Oh, I'll say it. Anyway. Well, you could compare it to it, four no, kids because that's what this is. No, it, I think it had to do with a lot. Probably at the time, this is just pure speculation. It, four kids probably convinced them that you know how different the American market is from the Japanese market, and they'd find a way to sort of make it accessible to a wide audience where the other ones would just be more of a. Uh, uh, loyal adaptation. They probably just wanted to take off more than anything else. So uh, my assumption and is that's kids, what, why they got four it. Four kids at the time had Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. So it's like they they succeeded. Change, so they sure. knew best, right? Yeah. 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 It's like that hey, makes what, perfect sense. What do yeah. we know? We're Funimation, Japanese. Americans yeah. like this stuff. Yeah. But they Funimation do. only had like a little series called Dragon Ball Z. Well, the should we talk about the Funimation test? That's the second one we watch. Yeah. That, yeah. Um, I thought that got a very for me. It was a very DBZ ish vibe. It felt like those late '90s episodes of DBZ ish a little more. Mm-hmm. Not like we've been watching the Garlic Junior Saga. Not that bad. It had the original music, which was great. They all had the original music. Wow. Which yeah. Was great. Harsh much? Although it wasn't. The, Although there, there was sound effects. There was no the VR. Vancouver ones. There was no. Oh, VR that's right. That's we forgot to mention the first one we watched. We did already. We mentioned. did already. Oh. <laughs> this is like the third even time we mentioned. Even it. in the room, man. Guys, this is who we are. I was distracted by the, the flooding. Thunder. It's the I've been watching the thunder. Guys, out the window. Guys, we found these VHS tapes. <laughs> If, uh, if we make uh, it through this, and yeah. we're not underwater by no, the end. No, no uh, as you mentioned, the Vancouver dub also had the Hanna-Barbera sound effects. That yeah. Oh, my yes. literal, literal Hanna-Barbera. Yeah, like, so you remember, like, the, the feet, the oh, feet yeah. running? I thought you were talking about VR. We are. No, I was talking about sound effects. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh. Ed, continue, Ed, continue. And tell us about these sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. Like following, yeah, yeah, yeah. slipping, <laughs> slipping down the the, the the sea king's like head to get mm-hmm. the, the hand of yeah. sound, or it's like the, tip, the tiptoeing, tiptoeing, right? Yeah. 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 Like you, you know what those sounds are, but that yeah, they like added those. If you've listened to Scooby Doo, those. those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I heard that one too. It was character it was more character name changes. We had Corby. Oh yeah, Corby. Oh, Funimation. Well, that's Funimation. Funimation. Yeah, and Funimation's it Funimation was, Corby. was only Corby and Colonel, uh, Colonel Morgan. Colonel, Colonel Morgan, Morgan. Morgan, which I think was a very, very uh, specific move from Funimation because they were like, "Oh, we don't want to associate it with the alcohol, so we'll change it to Colonel." Was Captain Morgan? Well, how old is Captain Morgan? It's old. The it's been around. Old. It's been around. So. And, and right now, Greg, uh, the number young. just popped into his head. He's like, "Oh, let's see, he was forty-five. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the the uh, the test Funimation dub. Uh, no, we are on this one. Eric Vale no. is... Well, Eric they didn't Luffy. have ending or opening. None of them had endings. And the yeah. only one that had an opening was the first Vancouver. I think it's just because it was a test. 
They probably would have done it in the final. Yeah. yeah. No, but yeah, let's let's talk about uh, Eric Bell's Luffy. Like, what was that like, Steve? It. It was still weird. It still wasn't my ideal choice. Uh, it's better yeah. than what I thought it would sound. It's very Sean Schimmel Goku esque. Very. Yeah. yeah. But not like like if not Alex is way. listening. Not all <laughs> not like that. No. Uh, just in the very lightheartedness. <laughs> no one else knows. <laughs> I like this is just for Alex. Just You're for the only Alex. one listening this week. It's no. fine, buddy. So every Maybe. time I talk about DBZ, that's one of the first sounds he makes. Uh, I it wasn't bad though. Uh, it wasn't great, but it wasn't. What about what about Zoro? You know who played him? Zoro was Andrew Chandler. Who uh, in the act- so we believe? No, Steve, uh, this is a gift. He don't, has. don't. Even <laughs> <laughs> that is in blood. Yeah, I mean, like there were no credits at yeah. the end of any of these. Yeah, so this is, is all from off of the, the Steve off of from Steve's my dome. Name. So yeah. But I think we learned this weekend that Steve is trustworthy on these things. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, I think it was Andrew Chandler. If you're, not, if you're not familiar, he's actually in the current One Piece stuff. He's been. Uh, Let's see, he's just recently been Absalom in Thriller Bark. He was Yama in Skypea. He was uh, uh, Big Pan in Davy Backfight. He's been doing a lot. He's, he's a big guy. You know, I thought out of all the voice acting in all three, we saw his was the best. I personally Oh, he was thought. Rockstar. See? I forgot ah, about Rockstar. You forgot about Rockstar. Yeah. Star. And along with everyone That was else. good. The, na- the Nami was pretty persistent. And I don't know what it was fine. about it. It was yeah. all It was, like, it was, it was like, okay in all of them, but like... I didn't, it Among makes the me really three of them, there is definitely like huge differences between Sanji was like the character. Holy crap! Oh, no, no, no. Can we talk about the dialogue, the some of the writing? Oh, Are we God. talking about Vancouver? No, for this, for, for the Funimation, the, the super harsh, blunt. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, like oh, you got to just say what happened. Was, we talked about this on the read through. I talked about how Luffy was kind of just straightforward, like oh, you're a coward. I don't like people like you, but still kind of like to Kobe. Yeah, to Coke or Corby. 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 <laughs> Luffy to Corby. One Luffy oh, no, to he, Corby. He's, 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 he's Luffy. Yeah. Luffy in the Funimation. No, 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 Corby Romano. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, have I angered you? <laughs> um, I guess we're keeping that in. No, I was just saying. Go on, go on, Steve. No, so you know how Luffy was kind of lighthearted, but he was he was honest, but it was like, oh, I don't like people like you. <laughs> I laughed it off. Uh... You know how eventually, you know, Luffy kind of starts talking about uh, where Kobe came from, how he was on Alveda ship, so he would get Kobe to stand up for himself and punch Luffy, and then of course Luffy proceeds to just beat up Kobe after that. So then Zoro and Luffy are walking to the ship, and he's like, oh, it, it was nice to see, um, nice to see you kind of help Kobe out there, but I bet you did enjoy punching him. <laughs> and Luffy just said, Luffy said yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, the whole salute scene when Kobe thanks them, and Zoro's like, wow, a new, uh, a new marine. A newly appointed marine saluting a pirate? I should have punched him too. Goodbye, I wish we killed you now. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, no, we were going to say one more thing about Vancouver, which we forgot, and it's important. Vancouver got the strongest reaction of all of us. Well, first off, the first Vancouver one that we watched, which yeah. was actually the la- la- well, last the one. The third one's kind of a mystery. Yeah, we're still not sure, but yeah. okay. The first one that's definitely Vancouver, it's actually the last chronologically, it was a piece. I don't know if we mentioned the Funimation one was clearly the ca- the end of Captain Morgan. Right? Yeah. The, that art. Uh, I, one of my favorite uh, mess-ups, uh, they refer to the devil fruits as gum-gum fruits. Yeah. In the Funimation yes, all one. of yeah. them were gum-gum fruits. Yeah. They were yeah. all the gum-gum mysterious gum-gum fruits. gum-gum fruits with different powers. <laughs> <laughs> there's, one, there's a gum-gum fruit that has fire, no, and no. that controls the it's weather. Like this, and there's even a gum-gum fruit that gives you the capabilities of rubber. Who knew? Gum <laughs> gum gum gum. Yeah. Oh yeah, what was it? Rubber man, rubber punch. What oh yeah, oh yeah. He says like man. rubber man kick. Yeah, like, rubber yeah. man, rubber kick. He, he doesn't say gum gum whatever. He just says rubber something. Rubber bumper, baby bumpers. Yeah, <laughs> no, he does not say that. Uh, otherwise, this one. Uh... But I want to talk about Sanji from Vancouver. We forgot to talk oh. about him. Oh. God. They were first off Zoro. We, we might as well dedicate this entire segment to the Vancouver dub. No, wait. Let's first go through the cast. So okay. Luffy. Let's first talk about Luffy and his barbecue time. Barbecue time, yeah. barbecue yeah. time yeah. and yeah. picks in a blanket. Very a teenager fan. surfer is. Yes. He's like a power, straight straight power ranger. Ninja Turtle. 
Almost. Hey everyone, hey, what's going on? We pirates, man. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? We didn't we, join my crew. There was this one line that we all reacted to that was like, that was terrible. It was like he was standing st- like still and completely still, and his lip flap went. It was like really fast, and we were just like, that was really awkward. Oh no, it was like Speed Racer talk. Yeah. 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 I think that was in the third episode. That was in where, the third one. Was coming in. There was a lot of Speed Racer talk in the third one. Yeah. A lot of mouth blasts. We'll, we'll get to that. Do you want me to go through what No, first, one uh, Zoro, because no, they each have something I want to say. I definitely know. Zoro, you said you knew. Okay, he's looking at us. I don't know up. his name. Uh, what did you guys think stretch, of? Stretch, stretch. We had number crunch here. Yeah. Okay. Number what? Oh, uh, yeah. Zoro. I don't know. He honestly, Zoro was probably the no. most. No. Don't even say it. Can, can I help? What? No, I don't agree with what you're about to say. The most what? It was probably <laughs> one of the more passable characters. No. Who was the more passive? So character? offended by who was the I more passive? <laughs> he character. looks like hurt, but I stopped. No, I'm just like, I'm, 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 I think I challenge you. I think who's better than was him. better than Zoro. I disagree completely. That I, thought, completely I thought Zoro was, was awful was, in, all right, in so, the Vancouver one. Yeah, Nami, pretty persistent. I like, thought she was amongst all of them. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah the voice, the voice matched. Like the the delivery was wanting on a lot of it. I thought Zoro. That was the only Zoro I thought that was completely out of character. I don't even know which dub we're talking I about. I thought he was uh, terrible. We're talking about Vancouver first. still. Thank yeah. Um, should we talk about yeah. Apis and her voice? Apis was, that, was good. Apis yeah. was probably I mean, I think she, she fits in with like anything else even nowadays. I was like, okay, well, yeah, that I was think, By the way, I, think even, I actually know who Apis was. Who uh, was it? That was Chantel Strand. She plays uh, Lachis Klein in Mobile, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed. Does she do anything else that we might know? No, nah, I have no clue. But that's the that's the only reason I recognize her. I'm like, that sounds like Lacus Klein. She's whining a little bit. Oh, that is her. No, yeah. Zoro. So me. that was my my Steve. She's Yurko in My Little moment. Pony. Yeah. Friendship is magic. Oh yeah, there you go. Everyone she plays Diamond Tiara. I wouldn't know her from that. Zoro. Really? <laughs> Zoro was pretty much what helped me figure out. Oh, she's Vancouver. in the Hobbit Zoro. Because <laughs> I think Zoro was Sam Vincent. Uh, from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Yeah, he's yeah. He was Double D on huh? Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Right. So. Yeah. That's. I'm trying to think. Is I there are there any other lingering thoughts about Vancouver? I actually it should, was going. it was the closest to the four kids stuff. I would okay. Say. Yeah, but they still had the 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 real music, the real yeah. original, the original real soundtrack. Music, yes, because they, didn't they have had the, the We Are. They had the real music. The We Are. I okay. Yeah. I just want to mention a few things about We Are because I know dude is listening and other people who care about this. Uh, they inserted clips from Gaimon, which is the last episode we're going to go over. The Gaimon episode. Uh, it mentions Luffy and the rest <laughs> in the actual intro, Luffy, but it, well, I agree with Jammer. It does kind of harken back to days of your, you know, uh, as as kids. Um, but what, let's just let's just get into the third episode, uh, which is the Gaimon episode, as I just mentioned, which is probably the first one they dubbed. Likely, this one's a mystery to me. It's a completely different cast from it, the one. It's we a mystery. Oh, no, I think fun. Sam Vincent is still Zoro. I, de- I think it's Canadian. I'm not sure if it's Vancouver. It could possibly be a Blue Water dub. I thought it was definitely more subtly done, which he, was necessary. My quick summary of this dub is the voice cast was the least uh, straining on like, the ears. It was pretty, you know, for the most part, they were pretty grounded, but nothing really stood well, out. Well, except for one that. character. Uh, and that would be, of course, uh, Gaimon and the the new General yeah, Septim for, for One Piece. For our, you know, for our younger fans who have no idea, uh, Louis Armstrong was a famous singer, back then. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of sounded like this. And <laughs> whoever played Gaimon was really inconsistent. Sometimes yeah. he sounded normal, and then all of a sudden, Rufy, I don't know, like it sounded really. It was so weird because, like, I'm not a man from, a from the young. <laughs> he went like from the young voice. Yeah. Cause like he transitions from the young boys when when you, when they're in the flashback, yeah. and then like oh I have to be older now. The skies are blue. <laughs> He's blue too. And I have to say one of the best lines was Luffy talking about Gaiman. He says I've seen a treasure in a chest before, but never a chest in a treasure. And we we're just like what's that Wait, mean? What? <laughs> <laughs> I came up with a new one. It doesn't I've, check out. I've never I've seen a chest in, <laughs> seen a treasure in a chest, but I've never seen a chest in a chest. <laughs> though, though Luffy sounded really he sounded similar to. To the Vancouver yeah, 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 same yeah. One. it could be the same one but it was it was more subdued it was very subdued yeah. so less it, surfer less surfer yeah it, sure. it has me thinking that maybe Vancouver tried okay here's a Saturday morning version and here's a true the original uncut as close as we can get it without making it a female character 
Yeah, without making Luffy a female character. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, right. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Without sorry. making the actress uh, a female. A, a, yeah. Female voice. Female voice Luffy. actress. Yeah. Right, so, the wrong word there. Is there there's, any... nothing, there's nothing more I can really say about the third dub. It's just... The mystery dub. It's like, it was the least... We think it was Canadian, though. Yes. Yeah, the... Like, acting and casting-wise, I'd say it was probably the best, but nothing really stood out. The so. writing, I thought, so, was... Writing was spot on. Yeah. Um, for the most part. Treasure. Except, they, said, treasure except they called them Luffy and Usopp. Actually, oh, no. yeah, you saw. They said, the they, they said Luffy one time, though. They said Luffy Which and is Luffy even weirder. Is that it was inconsistent. Oh, sorry. Oh. I, I always read, I, I always read uh, two Fs as one. Uh, <laughs> so, wait. That, I want to go around. Which was your favorite? I want, should I show you his favorite? Which do you think was the best uh, in the order we did? One, two, three in the order we watched it. Jose? Uh, I would have to say probably the Funimation one. Two. Uh, yeah, so that would be number two, the second one we watched. And I'm not saying that because Josh is here. Um, but mostly because mostly of the knife. Because knife, knife. I'll yeah. remove my knife from it. <laughs> yes. uh, no, in all seriousness, I think the Funimation one, Luffy, yeah. he, he's almost there, but he really does need a, a female voice. I feel like he's not quite young enough. Sorry, Eric. Um, and Zoro was just, I think Zoro was pretty much the best. At, I mean, he's no Sabbath, but yeah. he was the best there. And other than the few oddities, it wasn't that far off. You know, they, they, the oddities were noticeable, but, you know, it wasn't criminal or anything. It wasn't for Jammer. Well, one strength of the current Funimation dub that was very lacking in all these is how natural everyone's voice is in the current Funimation dub. You know, obviously Luffy is a put-on voice by Colin Klinkenbeer, but, like, Zoro is super casual when he's just, like, normal. Yeah. And, like, all the Zoros here are kind of straining to go for a voice, whereas Sabbath is just using, he's using his voice and being really natural, and it sounds great when he's... Being saying like a casual line, and um, I really miss those when listening to that Funimation dub for sure. Mm -hmm. um, my personal favorite was probably the third one, just as far as entertainment value goes. I think there was a lot of little funny writing gems in there that we uh, we were able to exploit for our entertainment. And um, I guess in that sense, yeah. Well, the, the first one <laughs> had a lot more. The of that. first one, but it was a bad yeah. episode. It was just like it was just a yeah. bad episode because it was it was an off-piece arc episode, unfortunately. But um, I think entertainment-wise, I think the third one was my favorite. Um, yeah. We almost didn't see the third one, by the way. That tape kept breaking. It yeah. did. Uh, VHS, Steve? dead technology. Mm -hmm. uh, I just go over some bullet points for each one. The first Vancouver one. Uh, four kids level writing. Well, she's like, it had like four kids level writing. Uh, A little bit better. Cartoony voices, acting. But some, when it got to like that really serious moment when Oppie is, is explaining the whole backstory with the dragon who we now name Grandpa Rick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they surprisingly use what, Ryuji? Ryuji. Ryuji and I was yeah. just thinking, I didn't use like Grandpa Rick or something ridiculous mm -hmm. like that. And four kids were. I think the reason we thought that is because she goes, ha, ah, at one point. Oh, oh man. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Tell me there's a reindeer that can pretty much do the same thing I can. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> But it was it was the most hokey. This one would have pissed off fans just as much as the poor kids though. Yeah, uh, the first one would have. But I, it was it, it was, was slightly the most memorable. Better. That's the thing. Oh, it was hilarious. The, we but never had to deal with it for however long we had to deal with four kids. So there's like no hurt to yeah, it. Yeah, man. man, one episode. Oh man. What, oh no. What? <laughs> one episode that no one's gonna see ever. Uh, the Funimation dub. Uh, was of course I was very familiar with most of the voice actors in it. Uh, rough around the edges. I don't think every actor had enough time to really get comfortable in the ro uh, roles. Um, like I think you're saying all the actors were struggling with uh, Zoro a little bit, kind of trying to ground him. Uh, but I think still kind of like captured the like the uh, like the lightheartedness of the show. So I'll give it that. I honestly am gonna say I think the best one was the third one. Uh, yeah, I think the uh, the acting was pretty good. I think the translation was pretty solid, besides some mispronunciations. Uh, Gaimon was the only thing kind of like uh, <laughs> you're taking me out. Of this. Armstrong. But my only pro uh, but uh, I think my only other problem was it's just that nothing really stood out. Like the voices were fine, but it's if you do it right, you don't they, notice anything. They lacked an oomph. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. Now you gotta be biased here. Well, yeah, entertain you don't have entertainment to be, value alone. The first yeah. Canadian dub was the best. I mean, definitely, it, it definitely. gave us barbecue time, and that will live forever. In <laughs> the annals of One Piece history. With barbecue time and yeah. uh, pigs in a blanket. Pigs in a blanket. Pigs in a blanket. Except, by the way, the like, pigs in the blanket wow. were actually dumplings. 
uh, which yeah. are not really that confusing to an American oh, I mean, audience. You guys have no one. idea how bad Sanji was. And yes, yeah, <laughs> I can't even describe how Sanji, bad his voice I, was. I think Sanji, uh, right, be- uh, right before Usopp, had, Sanji had the least amount of lines. So he, I felt like he had yeah, one like, line, I think, I the whole like, episode. No, no, he had several. He had yeah. some, but every time he talked, every, we were all like, all everyone be quiet, Sanji's getting ready to say something. Because, cause like, his voice was just so bad, and we just needed to confirm the fact that it was that bad. And he just, yeah. he hardly talked, so it felt like he was just some guy that was there. Like, it wasn't like even... the guy on the couch. It he was like a really, Sanji. Like, he it was, was just, an accent, but what was it? I don't know what it was. It was like a Tommy Wiseau kind of, yeah, like, like, mystery. Where is this? Yeah, where not is the same this? like that. Not a time was an accent. That would be amazing. We'll never know. That would, if anyone could mimic a Tommy Wiseau accent, that would be amazing. But Josh, You're what was tearing your... me apart. A piece. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, entertainment, definitely the first one. But in terms of like something that I could watch for like more episodes, um, yeah, I'm going to say you know, number two, the Funimation one. I think it was pretty solid. Uh, <laughs> everyone, everyone's rolling their eyes right now. Guys, I don't have to say it. But no, I, I thought it was good. It might have it might have had something to do with the episode, the fact that the episode itself was a really good episode. Right. And yeah. So I was like, it was oh, definitely the inter- best of them. Yeah. yeah. It's entertaining. You know, you had Zoro's moments and things like that. So uh, that one kind of you know worked for me a little more than the other ones. Um, I think my favorite, well, number one was incredibly entertaining, but the Funimation one, especially because of the fact it had sort of blunt dick Luffy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was great. That was that, amazing. The bluntest of dicks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was the bluntest that, of dicks. <laughs> other other option for an episode title, by the way. And just hear, and hearing voices that you know from other places out of context. Not only I know Canadian voices like yeah. Steve does. So I, and I don't even know mine that well. It's just... We've been watching a lot of Gundam Wing lately. Yeah. <laughs> Hiro Yui, would you like to oh, see the dragon? Once it was written in... Uh, was it? Don Brown, I think. Yeah, Maybe. I'd say, okay, I'd, I'd I'd too close to... No, but yeah, the uh, as Josh was saying, I think the second episode really is improved by the fact that it is a uh, a much better episode, and the other <laughs> the first I can't stop thinking about the first episode we watched. It was and great. It, it was. It, <laughs> it was it really just, funny. Well, it's... also we were blown away that this was working. <laughs> oh, uh, and... one more thing. A pieces was her name was spelled A P Y apostrophe S. S. <laughs> so her name was possessive for some reason. And the font was different on the first and third, like really weird fonts. The Funimation didn't really even change it. It was like a blue, Luffy, wacky looking font. Luffy phoned in the delivery of those those titles. Yeah, it's, it's little girl. Oh, sorry, it's it's <laughs> Vancouver one. So it's like little girl. I don't know. Dragons, barbecue, <laughs> pigs in a blanket. It's gonna be a party, man. Just the well, I, I just want to. I want to quickly say my thoughts, and then we could then we could get into the manga. Um, the first one was one of the funniest things I've seen in a really long time. Um, I think everyone has touched on most of it. I, we've almost reenacted the whole episode at this point. Uh, Number two had my Zoro. I'm sorry, Jammer was probably the best performance out of everyone I saw here. Cope, Cope, Corby was fine. I mean, he's supposed to be kind of whiny and annoying. Um, Just so you know, he oh. said Corby on purpose. That's, yeah, that's what it was in that dub. Yeah, I almost said Colby, which is yeah. someone I knew. Zach doesn't think that that is not the official translation. <laughs> oh no, it is. <laughs> Luffy and Corby. Luffy Luffy that sounded like and Christian you saw. Shawl. You see, the thing Christian I'm, Shaw, I'm right. kind of on, you know, Christian Shaw was in the third one. Right. Um, uh, or, watch what you say, Zach, because people... Will not like, not oh, literally. Okay. It's, it was, it's like playing for IMDb page. There's still <laughs> one piece on here. Man. <laughs> someone who said it exactly like Christian Shaw played Nami uh, in the third one. It was, it was kind of weird. But I'm a little on the, on the edge there. I thought the third one overall was better, but they called him Luffy and Usopp. <laughs> which I feel like are kind of unforgivable. So if I had to watch one for like continue, if I had to like pick up one as toy, if I'm if I'm toy, I'd have to pick number two, just because number one made a few Louis Armstrong a few unforgivable mistakes. But overall, I think third was the third one was the most consistent. If I could, you know, kind of straddle a middle ground. Um, all right. Why don't we get into manga chapter 787 with everyone here? And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that little. Thing. Excursion. Wow. Excursion. Um, and, and, and these will never see the and, light and of day. It, that little segment about things you thought we'd never get a chance to talk about. Yeah, and there's a lot more of that kind of stuff coming with OPP Dallas well, well, in the coming not, months. Not any more test dubs. I no, think. not any yeah, more test no, dubs. No. But other cool stuff that's yeah. completely different from the stuff we just described. Maybe we um, can make our own dubs. Mm. 
Let us just nah. <laughs> <laughs> let us just say that I felt like watching this. We were just in our minds preserving a little bit of history, and it, it was just awesome. We saw the Poneglyph. We saw, the and we will take it to the Rio Poneglyph. Oh, I think I, I I name dropped too many voice actors. I'm surprised I didn't get shot in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't we get into the next segment? Ready? It's barbecue yeah. time. Barbecue time. Shaka bro. So guys, talk to me. What? Anybody up for a barbecue tonight? This is the manga recap for chapter 787, four minutes before. So I guess it wasn't ten minutes. We said last week it might be called 10 minutes. Yeah, I was pretty conservative in guessing, uh, two, uh it, well, I was... You said three chapters? I was being, I was being wishful is what I was being... With one I, chapter. I said, well, yeah, when I said one, but I, I was I think I was being realistic when I, when I hedged and said two, so... Uh, you probably are right. I mean, it's More possible. than halfway there. Well, we'll see at the end just how close we are. Um, okay, so uh, what's going on on the cover page here, Ed? So we have Zoro and Bears wearing... Hoppy coats and headbands beating taiko drums, which are... Now, th now, this might be a little bit of a spoiler, but I think this is the first time we see Zoro in this cover page that we see Zoro using armor and hockey on his body proper, is it? Someone cor correct me Wait, if I'm on wrong. on the covers page? No, at all. At like, all? we know he's used armor and hockey on his swords before. We've seen that, but have we seen it in on his actual body? I want to say we have seen it on his hands before, but I, I can't quote an exactual, an actual, an actual time. Exactual? Exactual. No, that's that's what I quote. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Can't, I can't quote an ex actual, uh, you know, chapter or anything, but uh, I, I mean, it's our first in a cover story, we could say, or a cover page. We could say yeah, it's definitely cover. the first time in the cover page. Actually, um, it may be the first time in any cover well, page. That what do you guys think show. of this front page with Zoro and the Taiko drums and the bears? I like that he's he's so strong that he breaks the drum. Well, he shouldn't have good, used good, armament hockey. It's a good perspective shot of like through the broken drum. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's a cool. It's a cool page. And guys, uh, Zoro's hands appear to be blackened when he's fighting Pika. So, hmm. oh, you're looking through. Thank you. We yeah. got we got someone looking. Because oh, I don't want to make. You, well, actually, you, you were mistaken. If you knew these are the chapters, these the are pretty plan. much just the the usual ritual. Uh, Japanese drums that get used in like temple Oh yeah, yeah. And For stuff those who like don't that. know what a taiko drum is, yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much all that's going on here. Uh, Ed, why don't you start out the chapter then? It's it's a good first two pages you got here. Oh yeah, picking up right where we left off. Burgess on his back, and people on the ground say, "Hey, it's him. He's the three star wanted man. It's the Revolutionary Army Chief of Staff, Sabo." And he says, I'm Sabo the Revolutionary. Straw Hat Luffy is my brother. Ah. That's, a, that's a lot of times. Ah. <laughs> ah. What do you want with Oh, that? it's Revolutionary Army Junior Staff. It's Sabo from the Revolutionary Army. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Burgess, look how big Burgess is when he's uh, sitting on the ground yeah. like that. He takes that's a up, cool perspective. Yeah, he takes up like right two thirds of the, or like one half of the, uh, of the entire frame there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he gets up. Uh, and he's kind of curious about it. <laughs> Straw hat. He does. Or, he does make that noise. <laughs> brother, I've heard that line before. And uh, he says, and Sabo says, "You heard Ace say it, didn't you? We're a trio of brothers." And trio. <laughs> Gats's face is like. <sighs> oh! What's awesome about Gats is even outside of the Coliseum, he's overreacting. He's selling it. Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's acting like everything. He's like acting that, like always. the guy. Yeah, that's Luffy, just what he's 24 like. Twenty four seven lives the gimmick. He lives the gimmick. Luffy is uh, understandably unsurprised, seeing as he already knew that. He's like, I don't brother what? And also, he is completely deflated at this point. Still. Uh, so yeah, his eyes. That's how you know it's his eyes. So Look into his like, eyes. I have actually, the same eyes. <laughs> I do actually wonder um, if if now that he's gotten to this new stage, have we seen Luffy use Gear Third in the post time skip, and did he turn tiny? After oh yeah, he's, he turned. Tiny no, he has not. No, he doesn't tiny. turn tiny. But, but we've seen him use it. So do you think tons of times? Do you think he'd use? Oh, he doesn't turn tiny anymore at all. No, no, no he oh, used it on okay. Caesar. Remember? Right. Yeah, yeah. He, he's used it like several times in his career, yeah. Yeah. and on Do Flamingo constantly. And, and remember Hody? Oh, and he did it to break out of the well. That just happened in the anime. Yeah, yeah. he just did it. and He was fine. He was running after. Yeah. Um, no, I think eventually he'll be able to use Gear Four without this happening. Okay. Just like he is now using Gear Three and Two without any consequence. I guess right. he always was able to use Gear Two without consequence. Um. 
But anyway, sorry, Ed, please continue. The Sabo describes what happens at Bonero Island that the Blackbeard pirates took Ace captive, and that catalyzed the entire horrible Paramount War. I, I like it when people reference older stuff. It makes me feel like, oh, it's cl- I'm glad I've read all that. Before people are I learning, yeah. To this. People are learning things here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Sabo gets this really angry, stern look on his face. And he doesn't blame them for what happened with Ace, because that was the life that Ace chose. But he's got Luffy's back from now on, so keep that in mind. He just <laughs> stares him down. It's amazing. We've talked a little bit about Sabo's kind of semi-psychotic looking face in the anime, and we kind of, I don't know if this is psychotic, it's definitely this very serious. This is more like, don't mess with my brother. It's a yeah. very Luffy-esque face. Oh yeah, Luffy's made this face before. Mm-hmm, quite often. Well, Luffy. Sabo and Luffy have kind of similar faces, which I like a lot. They look much similar than Luffy and Ace, Ace did. Yeah, Ace didn't look. Ace had a yeah. very distinct look. Freckles. It was the freckles. Yeah. Um, um, when Oda originally uh, drew him too, he looked a lot different. Uh, Sabo? Uh, uh, no, uh, Ace, his nose was a little more uh, defined. Uh, he kind of like stepped back a little bit, did a lot of less uh, line work. Uh, we go to the next page, and uh, who wants to do, eh, if anyone wants to do the, the laugh here. We <laughs> Waking everyone up in the neighborhood. Uh, saying, I don't care how you're connected with him. I just want to, I, I don't care about the revolutionaries. He's after the gum gum fruit at this point. Gum gum fruit being all devil fruits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've learned. <laughs> and Sabo's like, wait, you don't even have a personal grudge with me here? And I love, I love that we learn kind of how slow Burgess is to all this. I don't know how obvious this, it this would be have obvious. been. It wasn't obvious to Yats. Well, he was. He has the same weapon. It's the same pipe that he used. Right, no one else could use a pipe. It's true. It's well, true. Yeah. Have we seen anyone else with a pipe? Yeah, only few can master the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> the, the double-edged pipe. Anyway, G- uh, Jesus H. Burgess starts to figure out what's going on. Oh, th- that Lucy well, who ate well, the devil fruit. Sabo slowly lights his finger on fire. Yeah, he also does him. that. If, 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 if that didn't give it away, you could. Yeah. Uh, so ah, I'm, I'm connecting things here, so it was you. And Gyatso's is like, oh, it was him. <laughs> flame flame. Ah, <laughs> yeah, flame. Gyatso is surprised by everything. I've loved Gyatso's reactions through this whole chapter. Uh, we'll get to them more specifically in a, like a second here. Um, so Sabo is is like, look, you look like hell right now. Hey, man. I love this Steven translation. Barbecue. <laughs> Barbecue did. I, I apo- literally, because apolog- he's, he's fired. I apologize in advance. Once the all one stretch. If I sneak in some references to something that's never, probably never seen the light of day again, I do apologize. Maybe one day. I think within the next few decades, it's possible that that is uh, sees the light yeah, of the day. Fifty years with the statute of limitations <laughs> being, you know, expires. When Tori is turned into a, some other, instead of a cat, it becomes a dog or something. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's pussy not, poops. Yes, yeah, poops and bombs. Wow, Zach, you're great with your evolution theories. <laughs> so it goes from cat to dog. Uh, the manga. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Sabo's like, look, Do Flamingo's coming from the other direction. I have my hands full right now with Burgess, which is very convenient. Uh, and Luffy's like, don't worry. Cat's over here and I will buy us sometime. Yeah, it's not happy with the name issues, which is not surprising. Luffy can't remember anyone's name correctly. And say, look, I got Mingo. You head off. Uh, I think Steven mentioned how there were so many nicknames for people in this arc, and this kind of stuff is... Reminiscent, we have I, I Lucy like, and Cats. I like, and... I like how Gyatz is barely visible, so I think that kind of plays into the whole, like, oh, hey, yeah. we don't know much about this guy, nor do we care to remember Because <laughs> even, like, the kind of, like, the little, the spiky little effect you use sometimes when someone, like, gets, like, a little annoyed. It's off that the little sound. I mean, not the sound, but the little... Crown? The, the, yeah, the little crown thing that sometimes appears above someone's head when they're like, oh, hey. Uh, I like uh-huh. how they're just barely peeking out from the speech bubbles. Uh, and so he's like, okay, so you, now you've, you've learned to call your, you know what you're doing. I'll just do this then. And this is really the first time Luffy and Sabo have interacted since the one page crying face that we got way back. He's like, oh, you got Ace's fruit, didn't you? And Sabo's like, yeah, it's a memento of him. I, no one else can have it. It has to be mine. But, uh, Look at their faces when they're doing that, though. You mean Sabo's face? You mean okay. Sabo's face, because Luffy has the same exact face, because no, he, he can't he's, move. He's got a little smile. Yeah, he's got a little smile. Yeah. Sabo has a big smile, um, which is a 
I'm going to say cute little panel. And, uh, Shang, Shang Sun Burgess over here. Yeah, Burgess just does not the agree. Power it's mine. Is mine. <laughs> My power. Too bad you will <laughs> die. And, and this is this is what I really like. Asabo also calls Giats something wrong, and it's pets instead of cats. Um, Close enough. <laughs> Giats is still not happy, but he's like, okay, I'll do it. Don't worry. And we get a new move. Ed, I'm going to have you pronounce this because I can't pronounce things. Galleon Lariato. Well, I mean, okay, that was Japaneseified, but yes. Um, I just thought I've been watching a lot of Japanese pro wrestling lately, and that's just how they pronounce it. Oh, is that a... a oh, Laria, yeah, it's a finishing move. It was made popular, I'd say, by probably Stan Hansen. So it's a wrestling. Yeah, well, not Galleon, which make, but... But it makes yeah. sense with Jesus Burgess oh, yeah, being yeah, a very... Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, what's the type oh, of Luchador. wrestling? Luchador. 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 Yeah. I was, uh, see, I always thought it was going to be Jesus Burgess, but uh, it's just Jesus. A jammer, yeah, yeah. So uh, that attack is actually all for naught because it goes, Phew! and it's like, what? What happened? But I forgot to say it split Sabo in half, but I mean, he's made No, I, he punched through Sabo, but of course, Sabo's a uh, flame, flame Logi, man. Yeah, Logi user, so it just went right through him. But the after effect of that attack just pummeled all these buildings behind them, so. Burgess is a strong dude. Yeah, we see a... And then we see uh, Sabo do a Burning Dragon Claw Fist. Flame Dragon King attack on Jesus. What a cool, angel. what a cool He does this freaking Kamehameha thing. thing. And he, his, his hands are kind of spinning well, around. Well, remember, so the Dragon Claw is like the uh, live long and prosper, except kind of yeah, yeah, moved. So and so it's yeah. it, done so, as a Kamehameha. Right. No, so, I, it's it's so one. I'm uh, sorry, like, I think. Oh, no, they're reversed. What he's doing like this? No, I thought, like, he kind of brought. Uh, no one could see what I thought doing. he brought both hands together to kind of do the Kamehameha. Kind of right. But really, I think he's just doing. I like, think it's like this. No, I, I think what he's doing is. No one is seeing what I'm doing. Can anyone listen to me? Yeah, I yeah, think I got it there. He's doing this really sick Indian burn. Oh, man. It's it's way better. Really no, fast. But, but as you mentioned, you said the live long and prosper thing, so it looks like. Oh, you know, it's claws. swirling, I think. So, yeah. So it looks it like. always swirls. I hate all of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're finally in the same room. No, all we do is just. It, it, it coils like the Eastern style dragon does, and Bird just flies off into the distance. This is why we have Ed here. Yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, yow, and then he hits some buildings, and we see a really. Uh, Badass look from Sabo. Yeah. And then uh, we get some audience reactions like, oh, he knocked one of the four emperors' crew right off his feet. Uh -huh. It's like, oh. <laughs> Why are so we why? doing Speed Racer for all of this? <laughs> uh -huh. He must be the number two man of the revolutionaries for a reason. So uh -huh. you know, there's, a, there's a reason why he's so strong. And then uh, Sabo, Sabo says, uh, so you've set your sights on me now? Well, then the rumors are correct. You are hunting power users. Gum gum fruit users. Gum yes. gum, or yeah, gum gum <laughs> <users>. <laughs> uh, Steve. Um, yeah, I wasn't on last week, so like this stuff kind of blows my mind. How it's oh, it's not just Blackbeard though. No, we so, we did talk we about, about that a little bit. Death, I'm sure I didn't get a chance to listen to the episode. So we have Yats. He's running with Luffy on his back, and he says, "Hey, Lucy, what's going on here? You won the flame flame fruit in the Coliseum, but and he's like, no, no, no." I wasn't that Lucy. That was the other Lucy. Um, and there are two of them. Giat's like is still like blown away by this. He still has no idea. Oh, it was against the rules. <laughs> Luffy says, I, "I had business elsewhere, so you know, Savo took my place." And Giat's like, "Oh, so that's what happened, but that's against the rules." But not fair. But good for you, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, taking on you know your brother's powers. Uh, it's he, a, no, he he approves. It's a really heartwarming story, man. No one's saying man. I, it's Steven's mood this week. <laughs> but uh, Gyatso determined. He's like, hey, the uh, the point is that now your recovery is the only hope for Tress Rosa. As we pan back and we see Gyatso running with a bunch of other Coliseum fighters running behind him. Uh, but a big kadoom. Some sort of explosion happens. And it's not the lightning in the background. Yeah, <laughs> Gyatso yeah, turns in terror as <laughs> this is something out of your nightmares. Uh, this is such a beautiful. Doflamingo's awakened, uh, you know, string abilities. You know that could turn buildings in string. These like demon tentacles yeah. have just beaten. I'm not gonna even say kill because it's one piece. Haha. Uh, just pummeled all these guys, and some guys look like they're almost like impaled, just hanging there in the air. It's it's disturbing. <laughs> Uh, it's great! Really it's a great, great panel. Mm -hmm. It's a really great panel. I, I so know. ominous. And we actually we do see Doflamingo at the bottom there. He's uh, he's huffing and puffing, but he's walking 
Um, and one guy's like, whoa, uh, it's like, how, how does he still have that much stamina? Uh, and the guy's like, all right, come on, we're not done yet. We need to slow him down. And Dope this might be one of my favorite parts of this chapter. Dopamine's like, you miserable rats. I don't need any stamina <laughs> to eliminate the likes of you. <laughs> like, he's like, get out of here, straw hat. Will you? It's like, it's like, you'll rue this you, day. You will rue the day. <laughs> What a, he is in, that's, we were talking about last week, Ed, yep. uh, about how we really want to see him angry, like he was smiling when he got out, remember? Yeah, yeah. He is angry, he's yeah. pissed, mm-hmm. which I love, that is fantastic, Josh. Yeah, and so now he's taking it out on all of the remaining uh, people inside the birdcage, so he's starting, you know, he's continuing the collapse, you know, towards the, uh, the center. And so now we're, we're seeing a bunch of um, just people continuing to run away from the birdcage, uh, rushing towards the center of town, making sure that they don't get cut up. Uh, I'm trying to read, what does that guy's basketball jersey say? Uh, oh, what does it say? I don't mm. know, but... I'll try and zoom Stephen in. Go on. Are you? Every, every, yeah, right? The one, the one week we don't have Stephen on. Wait, yeah. this happens every week. Kira... Kira... Kira Reta Honka? Kira Monka. Something like that. Kira. The, uh, the one says that. It's probably the man who's running from the birdcage or something like that. Big burly man. It might be a running. question because it ends with Ka. Ah. Oh, I'm running behind you. Know? Who Ka. needs Steven? We got this. Yeah. yeah. We could translate this series all on our own. It says, well, should I run? Well, Kira is a character from... Uh... Death yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so now all the residents of Dressrosa are, are they're like faced with this dilemma, right? Because they're running from the outskirts of the bird case, they don't want to get cut up, but they're running towards the center of town, which is a battlefield. And so the people from the center of the town are running right away. To the back, yes. And I love Here the way these two the panels music. Look. <laughs> Good. It's happening. It's finally <laughs> happening. Uh, <laughs> you know, we need Canadian dub sound effect. Yeah. And so <laughs> And so, you know, everyone just kind of stops in the tracks and they're just like, where do we go? Like, we don't know what to do. You know, everyone's so close to each other now. And it's either, you know, you're going forward into the battle and you're screwed or you're going backwards towards the birdcage and you're screwed. And so then uh, we get out of the out of the madness. Uh, we hear someone this is yell out. madness. Yeah. <laughs> this is dress Rosa. <laughs> so we hear uh, Zoro steps forward. Uh, and he says, Arm- he says armament, and you see his armament hockey go from, it flows from his hands into his sword. This is a really sick, sick yeah. panel. Wow. Love Mine, this, it looks snaking it, around. It looks like yeah. uh, the Spider-Man symbiote. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like he's venomizing the, the, the sword. sword. So. We are Zoro. I, what is that sound of it? So Zoro steps up, you know, Kinemon's very impressed with this as well. Uh, and you know, he's like, look, you know, this is, this is kind of our last hope. So surely this is not the sort of thing that can just be pushed back, um, is what Kinemon's saying. Well, I also like, I didn't realize the middle panel, you you get a zoom out when he slashes it and you see the sparrow flapper flapping in the background Mm. just to this huge explosion there. Yeah. I didn't really even know. So so Zoro's trying to fight, fight the birdcage, which is, you know, that's something that we had brought up before. Like we, we think he, he might have a chance because he's strong enough and, and Zoro's just, you know, he's saying, like, look, no one, no one's given it a shot yet. I think if anyone has a chance of cutting this thing or shutting it down, it's me. So, because you know, I'm awesome. Yes, exactly. Been kind of the... Look at what I did to Pika, right? He's, like, like pointing over his He's really. been cocky as shit, and <laughs> he's, he's right to be so. Yeah, and so, you know, he's like, look, everyone's just running around complaining, crying, confused. He's like, you know, rather than doing all of that um, and complaining about how impossible it is, how about you turn off your imagination and help me out? You know, this is just the power of one man. So, you know, I'm also, you know, a powerful man. And so is Luffy and so is anyone else. So maybe we still have a chance. So he's kind of bringing everybody he's back also, up. He's also shaming the proud warriors of Wano for being pussies. Yeah, look, look. He's like, Which, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have this, like, shocked look on their face. Like, my manhood has been questioned. <laughs> uh, Ed, what's next? So back outside the Smile Factory, we get a brief scene with Frankie, and he's like, everybody ready? And like, yes, we all. And uh, you see the fact, he says, the factory's made of sea prism, so it's not going to get chopped up. Uh, now, show me what your strength can do. Uh, and the Tontadas roar in approval. So they, they push the factory. They're pushing against 
the strings. Let's it's, just uh, take the smile factory and push it somewhere else. <laughs> I, w- I was thinking, can't the whole rest of the city, like the people running away into and from, can't they just go into the smile factory? The, that sounds like a good possibility. I they know. go inside it because it it's the only it, thing right? that is one hundred percent fine. Can you imagine if that happened and Doc Mangos is like curses. Well, <laughs> the other again. the other thing is just like. If what is the pushing accomplishing necessarily like? I think he, I think as like I think Zoro's trying to cut it. Maybe Frankie's still. Trying no, no, he, to, they're both trying to push it. Yeah, from what I could tell, so which they, I'm a little surprised. I think, think of it like it. Uh, Star Wars with the you know the garbage dump scene when they're just trying to keep yeah. the walls from closing in. Yeah, but someone had to stop it eventually. Three P L. Yep. <laughs> maybe this is he, we know Oda's a huge Star Wars fan, so maybe think? it's. Anyway, mm-hmm. keep going in. It's back on the Palace Plateau, the second step. Uh, basically, Robin and Viola describe the situation to each other with uh, Zoro and Frankie, and, they, and Viola says, "I don't. Is it even possible to?" Or, uh, it, she, Robin asks her, "Is it even possible to stop it?" And Viola says, "I don't know. I never even thought to do that." Um, yeah, to be honest, I didn't either. And Usopp <laughs> is in the background there, and uh, Viola, and Robin's just like, "That's it's, it's it is just like him to do that." And then to the south face of the palace plateau, where some schmucks are causing yeah, trouble. Yeah, it's like, that's yeah, it's the schmuck page. Not just any schmucks. It's the original schmucks. It's the original schmucks. It's the, uh, the... Too many schmucks. <laughs> too, too many, many schmucks. schmucks. Too many schmucks. Okay. <laughs> now, these are the guys from the gambling table that Fujitora sent, like, down into the basement of that. Full restaurant. circle, guys. Yeah. Full circle. Yeah, these were the first guys. So they were, they're following the young master's orders, and people are telling him to get the hell out of the way, and he shoots them for talking back to him. Yeah, what a brutal little page there, or panel there. Yeah, yeah you can guy, see the blood go flying. And that guy's definitely with his wife and kid, too, so... Yeah, they tell him to stay back. The new royal plateau is off-limits to anyone but the Don Quixote family. The family? What family, the people say? This is the safest place here. Let us up. Like, silence! I will not listen to your <laughs> insolence! I will kill you all! Silence! By the Young Master's decree, the whole kingdom will be wiped clean to start anew. And my favorite and line here. <laughs> it's very much the fatty <laughs> grunt. The fatty grunt. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and he takes a shot right in the head, and uh, the people are in shock. We go to the next page. What a great reveal. I'm like, who is this? And when you see Oh my see god, it, you guys, it's Dragon. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was Dragon punching that guy. I love in the foreground, you get that same guy in amazingly terrible pain, <laughs> clearly. I didn't notice this the first time in the so rest that was of the guys. Bartolomeo guess. messing him up, right? I probably. And we also get Sai, we get Kiros, we get Hyruden, we get. Elizabella? Uh, Elizabella, we get. Uh, Columbus. Columbus and Suleiman. Ruby Everyone's favorite. Yeah, uh, Hyruden. Uh, I said Hyrule. It's and the only Ido? one I could definitely see. A day out and Idio and, and the Shin rest, Jow. um, and all the rest. Exactly. I'm sure there's others there. And at first, I was of course like, "What the fuck?" But it is explained. Uh, everyone is shocked. And the the thing I love about this is, okay, we got Giats going around announcing what he's doing, and then we have the crowd is back, and hopefully the same guys from the anime who just move their mouths the same way Steve just. Oh said the it. oh you mean from the Coliseum. <laughs> from the Coliseum. The... Like, oh. yeah. And that one, that one giraffe guy, I hope we see just a guy dressed as a giraffe in the background. Anyway, um, yeah, so you get, like, the cheering crowd there. It's Hyrden, Bertola. They all have their, uh, the people who are cheering for them there. And Hyrden's like, how is this possible? And, um, uh, Eggman, <laughs> what's his real name? Dogma. Dogma. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's like, uh, I thought I was out of commission, and... Uh, oh, don't you worry about that. This is the life long mission princess man we chose for Dress Rosa. And the and even after you said a dog in my head to think about it, it's like life prolonging. What does this mean, little one? Um and no time for explanations now, Dr. Jones. <laughs> we, we go to Kiros, who's like, no, let's go, climb up this plateau over here that we just found. And it's the center of the birdcage, apparently. We just figured this out, but go. Um and everyone's like, <laughs> Yeah, Kiros, we love you, Kiros. And Sai is like, <laughs> no rest for the men folk. <laughs> if you're in good condition, you're coming with us. And uh, Baby Five, I didn't realize we're on the Titanic. 
<laughs> Maybe five in the background. Yeah, they're re- so I get, I'm guessing he's recruiting the strong and able, is essentially yeah. what he's doing, doing there. Uh, Jammer, finish us off. And then we uh, we cut to some gladiator sort of just like struggling and groaning. Oh, not just any gladiator. None of you guys recognize this dude? No. Nah. No. He looks generic as shit to me. Yeah, I agree with well, you. Was. <laughs> That's Spartan. That's the guy who picked a fight with Luffy. <gasps> Oh, in the, the first one! Yeah. Oh, wow. Holy sh- I really... This is the thing I really like about I this I believe it's Spartan. Oh, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah wow. What I'm gonna say it is Spartan. Good eyes. If I'm wrong, eh. 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 So, Next uh, panel, man. These guys are, are struggling, and then they're like, Wait a second, Doflamingo. Where are you going? We're trying to distract you. Look Stop. At that. Look at that panel. Look at his face. Look yeah. at his face. Doflamingo is, is not messing around anymore. His is that blood, is- or is it... Is it blood? Is it shadows? Shadow. Is it, is it, shadow. Is it, yeah, is it shadow, shadow? Or is it, it looks, hockey? It, it's really no. Cool. It kind of looks hockeyish, but I know it's not. It's probably shadow. Yeah. And uh, they're like, what are you doing, Doflamingo? And he says, if he won't show himself referring to Luffy, I'll have to force his hand. And then we get some randoms going like, oh my goodness, the, the birdcage is shrinking faster. Faster and faster. Oh my faster, goodness. Faster. And then we get uh we get the king going, no, no, Flamingo. <laughs> this is all Riku has really, he, he made a speech, and how and he's just been like, oh no, I hate this, what's happening? No, my kingdom that I haven't had in Yeah, he can't really do anything about it. He's he can't, he's, he's so powerless. helpless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's sad, but he's and been he, doing he a lot. And he still has his subjects going, please save us, King Riku, but he can't. You know, we cut to some shots with Sabo still taking on Jesus Burgess, and you know, more cut to some people saying like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? And we get a, a box saying, you know... No, 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 you're skipping ahead. Because you, technically you want to go to the, the things at the top here because you get Zoro uh, right. saying, you know, to push out the mm, board. Okay, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine. So we, we cut to, uh, you know, people saying, oh, it's impossible. And then we have Zoro pushing, you know, as we mentioned before, he's pushing against the birdcage to, I guess, prevent it from going any further. And then we cut to uh, well, Wah just being passed out, or not passed out, but quiet as things are going on around him. We cut to um, uh, Frankie cheering on the Tortadas. <laughs> Representing to... his home nation of Japan. Mm-hmm. And to, to, <laughs> oh, God. to push. Actually, I'm not sure. Are they on opposite ends of the cage or just at random yeah, points? I think, I think so, they're on opposite ends. So they're ends. probably you know, pushing and widening it more as, as yeah, much as they can. As as... Um, and then we get uh, Bartolomeo. He is trying his hard, his hardest, his hardest to, you know, to fight. And then we get Fujitora. I, 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 the Bartolomeo panel's fantastic. He's like, yes! I am doing it! like, no shirt on. He's like, yeah. yeah. He is freaking... They're all enjoying it. And... I'm turned on a little bit. And then we have <laughs> Fujitora. I appreciate the honesty there. Yes. <laughs> uh, Fujitora, he's a little bit uh, shocked, So I guess. What, what the hell's going on is out there? Is he sensing... Um, there's the, there's Do, what succeeding? are those little... Uh, what are the little dots at the top? They, that might be the birdcage breaking? Could be. Well, what's the sound? It's just uh, You just hear the rhyme, but he's noticing something, Fujitora. I'm really, really? I'm sure by the time you're listening to this, there's been a million theories and you already know, or maybe no one noticed, but what, there's something happening here. I'm very curious. Maybe, str- maybe some strings are breaking off. Or maybe that's just maybe. it condensing. Like, like they're breaking off to kind of come down. Yeah. What probably is because maybe there's some strings that are kind of like breaking off from the strings that make up the birdcage and they might be coming down like those crazy tentacles. So probably just... I, I'm not sure. There's something There's something is happening there. That's all well, I'm saying. Well, Dovamano just said like, okay, and it's like, if, uh, you know, uh, I'll have to force your hand if you're just not going to Well, no, he's just shutting the he's cage just quicker. He's shrinking it faster, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so I don't, I don't think, I don't know what it is. We, we don't really know. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm assuming that Fujitora has some sort of sixth sense that... That's probably representing in some Well, we saw in the going. anime when he originally was throwing the strings around to try and control people, Fujitor just catches one of the strings. Hmm. And if you watch Zatoichi, the whole kind of thing with that character is he knows more about what's going on than people who have sight. And I think that I, from judging how big a fan uh, Oda is with Zatoichi and the fact that Fujitor is based off of him, I think you're right. That is, I think that's what's happening. Sorry, that was long-winded. Continue. Uh, we cut to Rebecca, who's huffing. Um, where she, <laughs> oh man, she really she she knows how to huff and she's yeah, doing she, it. With, it's a weirdly placed Rebe- Rebecca. Rebecca like. What is Rebecca doing? I don't know. I think she's fighting with the rest of them. I think I assume. Yeah. Mm, is um, she? I don't know. I'm it's, not so sure about it's, Rebecca. It's really random. Like I feel like she's she's maybe running. she's gonna do something important here, she, like exactly. land the final blow into a flamingo. Uh, I wish, mm. but um, I don't know if I wish that. I do wish that. I'm gonna go out there and say I wish that. Okay, Jim. Okay. But I mean, it's not gonna happen. But I wish that. <laughs> no, it's not going to. Uh, Doflamingo is, as we saw, Imagine. said, ominous, and upset, and pissed, and not smiling anymore. No, saying, he's done you know, smiling. He's Show still... yourself, Strat. Um, he became Bane suddenly. 
Not really. Um, if he's not going to show himself, <laughs> I'll have to fall for him. <laughs> um, <laughs> people are saying, run to the palace plateau. And then uh, Gats is, or, excuse me, Luffy says that, and Gats is like, are you kidding me? Will we even make it in time? And Ed, do you want to... Time remaining until the bird cage reaches the center and causes genocide? Three minutes. Save us! Run to the palace! And everyone yells. <laughs> and then, uh... You gotta be Gats. kidding me! We make it in time! That's Luffy. <laughs> is it? No, it's Gats. 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 And, you uh, said Luffy, that's why. But, Sorry. uh, time until Luffy's honky recovers? Four minutes. So, Ooh, uh, that's, that's one more than three. There's a one minute <laughs> deficit that Luffy has here. So, so something's going to go down. Something's got to give. And what's it going to be? We do not know. Well, I tend to, Okay. We'll get to that in a minute. This is um, intense. Josh, you kind of really... When you read this chapter yeah. with us here, you had a really good way to summarize what the hell's happening. And I want you to, you know, just throw that out It was here. pretty much just like the... Like... Game over. It's like the stakes. The stakes <laughs> are. Over, man. Yeah, game over, man. It's like the stakes are as high as they can get. Like we've, you know, we've always joked about how you know Do Flamingo's, um, you know, one hour timing on his birdcage when he started to collapse it and everything like that. And you know, what does that really mean? And we we've kept getting glimpses of like how you know people were like running from the birdcage, but now we're to the point now where it's just it's reached its peak and so you have this desperation of all the people that the straw hats are trying to save and you know you have the rest of the crew who's trying to do what they can to keep the, the cage from closing and now you know luffy's out of commission do flamingo's not down you know sabo stepped up and he's you know he's dealing with burgess right now so like it's really hit this point where it's like the straw hats are kind of like you know their backs against the wall what are they gonna do like, we also mentioned just like the situation that the citizens are in of dress rosa which i feel like we kind of gloss over uh nuts yeah them, yeah know. i mean it, it sucks to be inside the bird cage it really i would way. assume <laughs> i'm not a bird but i would think it would suck to be inside yeah, yeah. so this is like I mean, I mean, yes, it, I could, I could say that this is like the pinnacle of Dress Rosa right now. I, I, in terms of like everything is going on and it is like at the height that it needs to be. And, and the way that the story is positioned right now, it's even at a point where like, I can't even begin to guess how they're going to get out of it, which is like a good thing. That's like, before good. It was That's like, what Oda's trying to do. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Before it was like, oh, well, Luffy's going to do his thing and he's going to beat the guy and the thing's over. Right. Gear now it's like, done, oh, boom. Gear 4 is done. He needs another four minutes to recharge. Though Flamingo says this cage is going to be closed in three. The narrator even agrees. Yeah. Um, Ode, Ode is keeping it from being predictable, that's for sure. I mean, it's been... A, Ed, what, what did you think of this chapter? I think this chapter had a lot of sort of great desperation. Like, there's the desperation... Well, first we start off with uh, the sort of Sabo Burgess, sort of Sabo badass section of the yeah, manga. And that's that was... Fun. He got a lot of steely looks from Sabo. He really has, like, sort of fierce resolve. And, to protect uh, his brother. Yeah, and I don't think Burgess was really prepared for that. And I'm surprised that he got trucked so easily by Sabo. Uh, but, you know, that, that's you know, good for him. Like, sometimes people should get beat. But, um, yeah, the, the, the rest of it was this hellscape of Doflamingo taking his awakened strings out. And people like in desperation pushing, and Zoro like shaming the Wano samurai, as I said, and Frankie leading the Tontadas. And it's everyone's last ditch effort to make sure that Luffy is able to get back and, and hit a Do Flamingo. But as we said in the last Oda Box, we don't really know if that's going to be able to happen. I'm so curious. Yeah. Uh, Jammer, what, what did you think of this one? Uh, I'm actually wondering about Jesus Burgess and his abilities because. As far as I remember at this moment, like, yeah. the last we saw about the whole stealing devil fruit powers was back in Marineford with Blackbeard and how... They talked about a little on Fishman Island, but right, we haven't but really he seen put, it He right. put, like, the, the, the blanket over the dead white beard and he stole it underneath. The convenient plot device. The convenient plot device. <laughs> However, they're talking about Jesus Burgess stealing devil fruits. And as far as we know, like, devil, devil fruits don't grow where people die necessarily like well, it's, it's, it was close on punk hazard 
Yeah. It was pretty close. I'm if, if you're when Smiley died. Yeah, when Smiley. When Smiley died. Smiley. And, uh, Smiley. Yeah. Smiley. There was the, the <laughs> apple nearby that took the thing, so maybe you just put the blanket over him to kill them. <laughs> they just have a fruit there. Yeah, what was the blanket for? Because I almost, I almost like got the, the impression I think, that I think Blackbeard, Blackbeard, Blackbeard is like, he's kind of like a stage magician. Uh, they don't, you don't, don't, you don't, don't want people to see the trick. And now I will make Whitebeard's devil Well, at the same time, disappear. there's a reason why he wouldn't want other people to know how he does it. Yeah. Um, like, let's say he doesn't have to kill the person, or if the person's already dead, how would but he extract it? But my point is, Blackbeard it? wasn't necessary other people for that know. process, apparently, because Jesus yeah. Burgess is about to yeah, die right that's now. The no. Thing. And but the thing that Jimbei said, we looked back at this a few weeks ago, because someone actually asked this question, thank you to whoever asked this to make me look back, I forget. I look back at one of the volumes, and they're like, Blackbeard and his crew are going around, all of them, hunting for devil fruits to steal. Mm -hmm. And they might be after yours. And Chopper, again, was like, no, not me. Um, (laughs) Because his is so great. (laughs) Because he is the best. Um, I want to be a human, Blackbeard says. it's, It's an interesting... They must... It must not be the devil. I think that answers the question. Is not... As you said, which is very, which is a very important point, it's not Blackbeard's devil fruit. That's what everyone's been saying. They, I he's, think he's he was coming has, at him with a giant knife. He still has two devil fruits, though. That's one thing. Blackbeard still has two devil yeah. fruits. So that's that's special. the mystery. That's the mystery is how he how he's able to consume so many. And yeah. I think the like yeah, if it's a matter of like you know as soon as a, a devil fruit uh, user dies and it its essence or whatever, right, possesses the nearest fruit or whatever it is, right. and that turns into it, then if they've cracked that nut, then, yeah, they just need to make it happen, right? It, that, so, that's which means question. murdering people. <laughs> yeah, he did yeah. come out of, out of him with a knife that was bigger than probably Luffy was, if you recall, because Burgess yeah. is a big guy. He's, I think he was just going to kill him, and then he has a pouch of devil fruits, and he'll do the thing that he did with White Bear, put the cloak over, take it, and run away. Um, and now he's going to do that to, to, um, Sabo, because, I mean, let's be honest, if you had a choice between the flame, flame fruit, although that thing seems to have bad luck at this point, if he actually gets away with killing Sabo, which I do not think he will, be hilarious. um, <laughs> I very highly doubt that happening, uh, that, that fruit would have some pretty bad luck, I wouldn't want to be Burgess with that, um, but so, overall, I thought it yeah, was, so. I thought it was pretty good, it was, um, I don't know. As far as the Doflamingo fight goes, like I've said this many times, we kind of are having, a, we have a double-edged sword here. We want to see it end. We're kind of having dress rosa fatigue. But at the same time, this is a fight that's been built up for God knows how long. So we want it to conclude really? properly. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we don't want it to be just a throwaway fight at the end of the day. But, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering about the whole three minutes versus four minutes thing at the very end. Like, is it just going to be like, oh, it's actually going to be four minutes because Zoro is pressing really hard. That's against what him. I was That's thinking. That's what I was thinking too, man. Oops, my like, clock is, my watch is <laughs> Yeah, today, everyone's so. group effort bought us another minute and 15 seconds. And so now Luffy has like 15 seconds to, you know, something like that. Yeah. That's what that I That would thinking. be cool to yeah, watch, I, actually, I, even if it's predictable. Yeah, yeah like, I guess it has to involve the cage because I thought like, oh, what if someone distracts Del Flamingo? But I don't necessarily think... <laughs> It's not on Doflamingo. Like Let's put it this in, way. Cage stops. Remember so. the whole thing that even if there's three minutes left for this cage, there are still people there, and they have to... I think they're probably going to go into the sad factory or something. Uh, they could also have that final fight inside of the factory, because the factory's been kind of the... Yeah. yeah. It's been kind of the crux of everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that could be really cool, with everyone inside right. of it from the entire it's not, city. It's not, it's not so much... And then it's like a coliseum. It's like a second coliseum with everyone watching the very end of the It's not so fight. much when Doflamingo gets beat that that means, oh, Kaido's mad. It's when you destroy the factory, that's when Kaido gets mad. So it'd be kind of fitting if, like... And the factory like, you know, crumbles how, like, when Eneru was beaten in Skypea, he kind of got punched into the bell. It's like... If, Doflamingo got like punched into the factory. Mm. I really or, or shit, something. I like this. Oh, yeah. I know, I this like, though, not necessarily like the strings can't destroy the factory. I know it's Sea Prism Stone, but I don't know. I, I feel like if their if their final confrontation takes place within that factory, uh, it'd be full circle. One but, last thing I want yeah. I want to mention is um, Fuji Tora that we we questioned that one panel near the very end, and I think. I can imagine at one point him going like, oh, everyone's helping. And then he somehow does like his gravity power or and maybe reverses in some way to help get an extra push on the... Oh yeah, Fujitora. I'm glad they reminded us Fujitora was even there. I'm, I'm, 
I, the, that one panel is probably the most perplexing of this chapter. I might be over reading into it, uh, reading into it's it. It's just an interrobang, and there's not much to read. No, it's a, it's an interrobang. <laughs> the weird lights at the top, and just kind of what Fujitora's role is going to be here at the end. He's I mean, been like oh. It just flies off. The birdcage flies off, and it's just like, oh, I didn't realize we were in a birdcage. I, I was mentioning it during the. <laughs> no. Nope. I, I mentioned it during the meetup, but in chapter seven hundred, uh, Sakazuki Akainu, uh, the fleet admiral, is like, I sent Fujitora there. He has. I'm giving him one day to figure out what's going on. I actually am thinking that Sakazuki could show up at the end of this, maybe after Luffy heads off, um, or something. It's the fact that this day has still been going since chapter seven hundred. There, there's something. Gonna, that's going to wrap up. I mean, they, the fact that they hinted at that is pretty interesting. But Steve, uh, I want to hear your thoughts on the chapter. Um, the shit is hitting me fan, or the... Uh, We've used that episode title already. Or the birdcage ceiling. The, the shit bird is hitting the birdcage wall. Uh, guys, we're getting... I think we're just about ready for the climax of this arc. I think come next chapter, that's going to be the... What's the deciding factor that's going to buy Luffy enough time to... And then the, maybe recharge. one after that might finish it. I, my call is next chapter is, by the end of it, Luffy is recharged. The following chapter, go for Mando the Beaten. I don't... So my, real, I, I my realistic prediction will come true, then. Two chapters for ten minutes. Two chapters for ten minutes and one chapter to kick his ass. Yeah. Which I think... Yeah, I didn't say anything about the fight ending in two chapters. No, I no. said yeah, ten yeah. minutes for two chapters. You're correct. Right? You're correct. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, it was cool to see Sabo get, um, get some action in fighting Burgess. I uh, really like that. Zoro even had a cool moment. I really like the panel with Doflamingo. It's really creepy looking. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's getting to it. We're, these, these are the final moments, guys. Uh, so, uh, I forget. I, I, forget. I, I hope you enjoyed Dress Rosa because we're getting close to the end. I think it was Sam's editorial that said, I want to see Doflamingo crying. I want to see his eyes. I want to see his eyes. His sunglasses need to get knocked off. Yes. Um, I think we all agree that we want to see that. And I kind of agree. I think it was Sam's editorial, right? He's got to lose right? his smile. Uh, I don't check? recall. I think it was, but I'm not sure. I'll, do, I'll check right now. Um, I th It was that poor Doflamingo bastard or something. Yeah, or yeah, poor yeah. Flamingo bastard or something, the name of it. Um... I do really want to see him weeping at the destruction of everything he worked so hard to build. That is Sam's piece. That, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know if you guys agree. I just want to see him... If he doesn't die, I want to see him humiliated. Like, if we go like, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your and fault. <laughs> Back off, man. He starts hugging him. All right. Uh, any final thoughts? I'm just waiting on that next chapter. Okay. Yep. Let's, uh, let's round this podcast off. Let's... Do it. Barbecue. Heck of a show you put on for that kid. Won't even matter now if those leathernecks learn the truth. Corby's got a dream. He deserves a clean shot. Yeah, yeah, syrupy sentiment. But be honest. You liked punching him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little. <laughs> Luffy! Hmm? I'm indebted to you for all of your help! I'll never forget it, sir! Wow, a new marine thanking a pirate. Maybe I should have punched him too. <laughs> This has been the One Piece Podcast, episode 370, live in Dallas, Texas. Thank you all so much for coming on the show today. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Be excited. Jose was actually here the entire time. We've recorded in a row. Hey, Jose. Uh, yeah, I was, I, was, I was off actually in another room recording some audio clips for the, uh, for the podcast from the tapes. Oh, totally. Cool. That's totally what I was doing. Uh, and yeah. Jose, I'm already ready. But do I really need to be excited? <laughs> uh, yes, I think you need to be excited. You need to be ready. and That's no chicken it, fried steak. Because, damn it, it's barbecue time. Which is not said in any of the episodes. <laughs> yeah. uh, was, we made that shit up. Yeah, by the end of this episode, we're it, it's, that. No, it said it's barbecue. It's barbecue tonight. It's barbecue Bar tonight. That's what it which is. Which should be the name of it's our new late night show. barbecue tonight. <laughs> well, my favorite line is just, do you have... Barbecue. <laughs> That's the one I was thinking of. That's, That's what it is. Barbecue. <laughs>
People just Thanks hate us blanket. because like we got to watch this. Yeah, we need to find a way it. of taking that sound clip out and at least okay. letting people. Yeah. I mean, maybe I'll, I'll we just can. record it with my phone. There you go. Maybe we can. Um, okay, so uh, why don't we go around first? Uh, Jammer, we're, we have something called Patreon. Do you want to tell us, tell everyone out there quickly a, a little bit about it? Yeah, we're we're quickly trying to find all kinds of extra perks for Patreon subscribers to get, including. Uh, OPP Dallas bloopers, as I said earlier, we and deleted were, scenes and stuff. In deleted scenes, we recorded many of those things because we were so unprofessional that that. Just and also, it. sometimes there's extra cool stuff I that like we could fit in. Beyond beyond the professional facade we give, <laughs> there is nothing. We are Maji, okay? I, I like how jammers and oh, you, you know, you guys aren't really doing a good job putting over uh, OPP Dallas, and you're like. Oh, oh, hey, just so you know, we're unprofessional <laughs> all, all the time. And I'm like, oh, who's really making us seem... Who's really making this trip seem like it was... Any, uh, anyway, you can support... Uh, support us at, at uh, patreon.com slash podcast. We have many different levels for many different And it'll perks. help for future projects, and not just not just this one, obviously, That's which true. is done. We'll grow in professionality. Yes. <laughs> and uh, if you are want to see what we've done in the past, go check out our movie at oppjapan.com. And there was one other thing. Right, the OP read through coming this Thursday, volume seven through twelve. Uh, yeah, make sure to check that out. That's been a ton of fun. Um, and Jose, is there anything else you want to mention? Uh, the One Piece related, or is this time to plug stuff? Why don't we plug stuff, Jose? Where can uh, people find you? Uh, you can find me at Jose underscore CNN on Twitter. And uh, this weekend uh, is MomoCon, which I'm going to be at, and I believe it's at two two o'clock on Saturday, May thirtieth is the music of Toonami panel, then and now. Please come by. It's all about Toonami music, so if you're a fan of that stuff, please come by. It's going to be tons of fun. We're going to have prizes and records to give away. Um, and then later that night is the official Toonami panel, and I, I'm i assuming there's going to be surprises there. I don't know, but uh, I, they've always put on a very good show, so, you know, I'll definitely be there. I hope to see you there, too. And I have a podcast called Tape Jam. You can find that at tapejam.podbean.com. A new episode will be coming out in June. Cool, and uh, you can check me out at Jam of the Writer on Twitter. You also definitely want to check out my novel, Dangerous Faces. Uh, it's a Western novel. It's all kinds of fun. You may even find a, a couple little One Piece nuggets in there, because obviously One Piece is a, uh, a huge influence on you know my work in general. So definitely check that out on Amazon. You can get a physical copy or a Kindle copy. Also check out uh, my other podcast, The Static Real Podcast, at staticmultimedia.com, plus on iTunes. You can find it there as well, The Static Real Podcast. Hey, guys. This is Steve. That's not me, sorry. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I could project my voice into Jammer. You could do all the talking for me. Uh, where can you find Steve, Jammer? <laughs> I don't know. Not at Mad Max, uh, no, apparently. No. Oh! oh! Oh, man. Burn! Oh, oh, it took geez. us till the end of the episode. <laughs> no one will get it. Um, Steve yeah. hasn't seen Mad Max. Uh, I was going to say inside go. Jammer's vocal cords, but <laughs> it's me, Steve. Close, close your mouth, Jammer. You could follow me on Twitter. <laughs> you done? Yeah, I'm done. No, not you. This this jackass sitting across from me. It's Zach, by the way. I <laughs> <laughs> almost got away with it, too. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, of course, at Steve Yurko. Follow me on Tumblr, steveyurko.tumblr.com, for art and all other art. <laughs> I'm also going to be at a convention this weekend from May 29th through the 31st. That's Awesome Con in D.C. I won't be alone. I'll be tabling there with the dude. Uh, we'll be there. Uh you listen to the show and you're going to be attending awesome con find us say hello say barbecue <laughs> okay. it's a secret word it's the secret word it's the secret word uh josh uh, yeah yeah so um follow you can uh follow me on twitter i'm at josh koshrek k-o-c-u-r-e-k uh same thing on Instagram as well. If you like pictures of cats and coffee. Uh, <laughs> the two K's. Yep. <laughs> 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 it's funny because both of those actually start with C's. Uh, thank you for oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. That's why I'm here, guys. I'm here oh, to explain jokes to people. <laughs> I'm going to so, make a new podcast. It's going to be explaining bad jokes to people. Um, outside of that, you know, give Funimation your love. Go see uh, Resurrection F when it comes out in theaters this summer. 
Uh, that'll make my life a lot easier. Uh, <laughs> everyone, everyone listening. Yeah, yes, yes. So any DBZ fans out there. Um, and then lastly, uh, you know, check out Double Talk. I, I, I plugged the last few times I'm on here. It's our weekly live stream recap show that we do on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Funimation. It's uh, Wednesday nights at 8.30 Central. And that's where uh, Justin Rojas, Lauren, Lauren Moore, and Chad James from Screw Attack recap our broadcast dub episodes right now we're going over assassination classroom uh seraph of the end and blood blockade battlefront so all cool shows and uh, i produced that and uh yeah i just want to know what you guys think so thank you and how could the good people out there contact us well zach we're on twitter at zach underscore logan and edward e physio but for contacting the podcast you can go to onepiecepodcast.com twitter.com youtube.com and facebook.com slash one piece podcast one Piece Podcast.tumblr.com is our Tumblr for news updates and funny pictures. One Piece Podcast at gmail.com is our email address. One Piece Podcast is our Skype name. You can subscribe on the Stitcher Smart Radio app. You can subscribe on SoundCloud. You should subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes or call us on our phone number. Now, right. everyone, I think you might have it in front of you. Maji. Uh, no, 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 not yet. No, not yet, guys. Our phone number is 347-497- Maji! That phone number again is 347-497-6254. Call, Call anytime. anytime. With your questions. <laughs> really? What the hell? With your questions, comments. Type delay. <laughs> <laughs> questions, comments, theories, or barbecue Pigs choices. Pigs in the blanket. Pigs in the blanket. Really, <laughs> the best I on the island. I also want to plug uh, OP. OPFix at gmail.com if you want to send in any oh, yeah. AMVs or fan art related stuff, stuff that you've been working on, fix. or stuff that you've discovered. So at OPFix at gmail. Oh, it's OPFix. I, like, I think it's OnePieceFix oh, at I gmail.com. At this moment. That's annoying. I think it's OnePieceFix at gmail.com. It's OnePieceFix one at gmail.com. You're correct. OnePieceFix at gmail.com <laughs> is the email that you will use in order to send us stuff. Uh, as we round off today, uh, I do want to give a big thanks for everyone who's here and stayed up so late to do this with us. I want to apologize to our listeners for the thunder and the rain. Uh, we and just us in general. And just us. I mean, that is something we should really apologize for. It's mostly we... Steve's fault. <laughs> <laughs> is this because I didn't see Mad Max? <laughs> exactly. I was going to go with the dropped laptop, but sure. Um, oh, yeah, it... reference things that won't be on till the end of the episode. <laughs> or at all. Um... <laughs> But uh, I want to thank you all for listening, uh, and we did make it alive uh, as long as the streets don't flood any further. I do want to give a big thanks to everyone, Josh, of course, who did so much for us at Funimation to get this all together at OPP oh Dallas. Funimation was so amazing. Um, again, you should take the knife off of Jammer's throat. That's just not cool. <laughs> um, okay, and I, I do, again, <laughs> they were I, since your guys are actually here in person, I do want to say this, you know, thank J- uh, Jose. <laughs> Jammer? I can't remember. You almost called me Jammer there. I want to thank uh, Jose for, for carrying everything, for running around, for doing all this, and for coming this weekend. Uh, I know it's not easy to, to get the time to do it, so thank you. Thank you, Jose. No problem. Um, Anything for you guys. And, of course, to Justin Cook, Joel McDonald, Sonny Strait, Brina Palencia, Clarion Harp, Colin Clinkenbeard, and uh, S- Stephen Hoff, and everyone else out there. And, and Brad te- Venable. And, and Brad, Brad Venable. Venable. Oh, Brad Venable. Who, who is he? You'll, You'll find, find out. out. Uh, <laughs> 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 that, 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 was, that was better than Maji. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, Ed. Uh, Neil? Maji. Yep. Neil? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Neil, and Stephanie, and TJ, and Walter, and Andrew, mm-hmm. and everyone. Yes, they were all amazing. Um, and ev- everyone at Funimation who came to our One Piece meetup, thank you all so much. Yeah, we got to talk about that meetup, too, real quick. Uh, oh, yeah, the meetup. Sorry. Zach's looking at me like, I don't know. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I saying, no, uh, I'm fine. Yeah, we organized a quick little meetup uh, Saturday afternoon in Dallas, and it was freaking awesome. We had a... A uh, good amount of you show up. And more, more than one person. Showed and then, so, yeah, and, yeah, well, more, more than, than one person one. showed up. Like 15? some people who came back, <laughs> and some people who didn't even mean to show up, but were totally had the same interests, uh, wound up hanging out with us. It was pretty cool. It was rad. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank, thank you all, uh, and uh, look forward to One Piece podcast goes to Dallas over the next few months. But for the One Piece podcast, everyone, my name is Zach. My name is Ed. And my name is Steve. We'll see you next week, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Dallas. Goodbye. Goodbye, barbecue. (laughs) Barbecue. You see, it works because...
Yeah, you guys are now barbecue. Good barbecue. Barbecue. Because that was a line in the dub that because we saw that no we, one will ever when see. When we went to Hard Aid Barbecue, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, can I have the pigs in the blanket? They're the best on the island. Yeah, yeah. So the best yeah. The they take four hours to make. Four hours. <laughs> 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 they look like dumplings, too. It's so good. Yeah. Three, two. <laughs> you can stay with me. Mr. Bokoyan! <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. Thank you very much for saving our little apiece. What do you think? May I have the honor of entertaining your new friends with a little welcoming party? Do you have... A barbecue? He's got a fire pit in the back, and his piggies and a blanket are the best on the island. He's famous for them here. All right, let's go.